uh, welcome to all you viewers out there and um, welcome to this show in conversation with Vilas Nayak by Art for Inclusion, an initiative of India Inclusion Summit. So I'm so very happy today to be a part of this show and as I walk you through in conversation with our very own Vilas Nayak. I'm Ashwarya and I'm a blind artist. I'm one of the artists from the Art for Inclusion uh, 2019. Without any further ado, let's invite our special guest. He doesn't need any introduction because he's popular himself, but I will still introduce him and call us uh, to attend this conversation with us. So he began his journey driven by a passion and he took a road that was quite challenging but he started his journey from a small town called Ujira in South Karnataka. And today he's known to us as the world's renowned speed painter and fine artist. He has done over 900 performances and over, he has visited over three, 36 countries and did his performances there. So ladies and gentlemen, here's Vilas Nayak for you all. Thank Good morning, Vilas. Good morning, Aishwarya. Hello, everyone. Namaste. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, Vilas. I'm very excited uh, to yeah. having a host the show and talk to you and get to know about you, your life journey and uh, your passion for art. Yeah, so wonderful uh, to be a part of this uh, online, you know, the interaction that we are having here. Uh, always a pleasure, you know, to be on the India Inclusion Summit platform. Our pleasure, Vilas. So let's start off with our first segment. We want to know more about you and uh, what made you uh, the speed painter you are today. I'm very curious to know. So let's go back to your childhood, Vilas. So, you know, I have known kids, you know, three-year-old kids. Uh, who usually put their finger in their mouth and whatever comes into their hand, they just put it in their mouth or they, uh, you know, go around and, you know, being mischievous. But I believe that you started painting at the age of three. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, there's no one in our family, actually. You know, people ask me whether it is uh, hereditary that you... Uh, were good at painting even uh, from childhood but I believe you know like every child you know like uh, as a kid we will have some special talent you know probably it's up to us to identify what it is um, so I was I was good in uh, actually multiple things uh, you know from painting to playing badminton academics and cricket so these are the things I was actually really good at as a kid uh, but probably there is one thing that, you know, uh, stuck to me, which is uh, painting, you know, because I had that kind of introspection, you know, like a talk going on with myself uh, uh, later on in the life, you know, to understand what I really want to become in life. We'll probably talk about that later. But during childhood, you know, uh, because I lived in a very small village, Ujire, as you rightly said, um, back then when there was no uh, social media, no television also in our house, you know, we had all the time to uh, do whatever we wanted to, right? There was a lot of, a uh, lot of time actually all of us had. Uh, 90 kids, I think in that way were like really blessed. So I was uh, a really introvert kid and I would spend at least uh, six to eight hours every day painting, you know, after coming back from school, I would start sketching. Uh, if it is a Saturday and Sunday, I would be like painting throughout the day. I had a lot of patience actually back then. I think I, I really believe whatever I paint now is all because of the kind of practice I did when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of practice, Vilas, so you know how, you know, when you grow up, when you go to school and you have your class workbook. I remember my days when I was sitting in the class. Yeah. And I would daydream and then I, you know, inspiration would strike and then I would, instead of writing the dictated uh, classwork or teacher used to give, I used to go to the back page and then sketch something. Were you something like that? And also, could you tell us about uh, the sketch that you drew, uh, you know, of your teacher and what happened <laughs> then? Um, yeah, I, I mean, talking about the inspiration, when I, was, I, I started first, you know, for me, nature uh, happens to be the, like, best and the most prominent like inspiration to paint uh, because I could see beautiful mountains even from my uh, house in Ujire. 
So uh, even now, you know, nature really inspires me to paint. Uh, the sketch that I did of my teacher was not actually in school days, but that was in college. Uh, that was a very fun incident. You know, we were sitting, I think it was in the afternoon. I was kind of bored and I, what do I do? What do an artist do, right? So I was sitting at the, uh, one of the uh, backside, you know, rows and uh, I started sketching the teacher who was uh, on the uh, podium. And um, I passed it on to the uh, my one of my friend who was sitting in the next uh, row, and unfortunately, you know, it just went uh, to all the way to the front row, uh, and the teacher caught it. Uh, obviously, uh, the entire class knew who would sketch. <laughs> the entire college knew who was good in sketching, so there was it was not it was an easy guess. And the teacher, he, you know, he walked away from the class and then I had to go to the principal and uh, say, so this is what I have done and all. It was a very funny incident, but, you know, uh, in, a, in a good way, you know. Uh, so uh, that also, uh, uh, you know, probably will tell you that, you know, I was always sketching, you know, like whether I was in class, I was somewhere else. I was always sketching. Even now, even if I don't sketch, I would always be thinking about probably my next concept or you know what can I do or something about art when okay. I travel now you know because I have to travel a lot for a lot of shows especially flights to US Europe and all like 10 15 20 hour flights mm -hmm. I always just sit quiet and I'll be always thinking about okay what can I do and all that so the thoughts and my actions are always connected to art and art I'm sure that teacher of yours must be telling his students, you know, we last do a pay, you know, sketch of mine when he was in this class. I'm sure <laughs> he would be doing that. <laughs> Hopefully now he must be <laughs> happy that I did that sketch. But unfortunately, I don't have that sketch with me. I should have preserved it, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's move on to our next question, Vilas. Um, You know, there's this movie, I'm sure, like, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that you might have watched it. It's Three Idiots. In yeah. that it says, you know, your there is girlfriend and there is, you know, your wife. So for you, your girlfriend was, uh, you know, uh, when you began, you actually uh, started like, you know, you were working in an IT company. And after a while, you took a decision to take, uh, you know, to uh, take your passion, your artwork and uh, go on with your journey with it. So your work was your girlfriend and your art was your wife. So obviously... Vijeta is your wife here, but I'm just uh, quoting that. So could you tell us what happened? I mean, how did you take that step to take up uh, this art as your passion? Yeah, yeah. Um, art as my full-time profession is what you're asking, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. it was not a, definitely not an easy uh, decision because uh, I was already working for a multinational company. I was with IBM working as an HR. I already had, you know, like six years of uh, experience as a corporate guy. Uh, so uh, not exactly in Western countries, but at least more so here in India that we all have this perception about the permanent job, you know, all that concept. So uh, the moment you become, you know, uh, pursue the old uh, fashion, you know, like the, uh, we have that preconceived notion, right? You know, like if you are a teacher or a doctor or an engineer or a software engineer, whatever it is, these are all very safe and, you know, permanent job is what we feel. So it was not an easy decision, but I always wanted to be an artist. So I was part of, you know, a couple of uh, reality shows. One was uh, India's Got Talent in 2011. So soon after that, you know, I thought probably this is the best time to take a risk. You know, we have to time the decision also. Uh, well. So I was single at that point of time. I didn't have much responsibility. So I thought, yeah, this is an advantage. Probably if I have to take that risk, this is the time. And I was, just out of a reality show so i was slowly getting that uh, uh, you know the uh, the viewership the fame that i was looking for as an artist mm -hmm. so that was also working out for me and um, but you know at the same time just to make my decision more tougher i uh, not many people know this but while working for a multinational company i also had an offer from another company uh, for almost 100 percent hike you understand right as a corporate employee when you get a hundred percent hike and what do you do? I mean, you just go and take that offer. Like this. Yeah, so for me to say no to that offer and to, to even quit from the job I had and to pursue this uh, art as a full-time profession was a, quite a 
uh, challenge. Uh, I convinced my parents and then, you know, um, I took a very calculated uh, risk uh, in 2011 um, because wow. I truly believe that, you know, if you are actually good at something, you know, uh, you can just go on and, you know, there's no limit. And uh, after 2011, whatever has happened, now there is no looking back. Uh, I have performed in more than like 36 countries now. Um, looking back, I, I feel that, you know, if I wouldn't have taken that calculated risk, mm -hmm. I probably would still be, you know, uh, working uh, in a company, which I, I truly enjoyed, actually. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy. I really, really enjoyed working for a corporate as an HR officer, you know, and but but there was something more that as an individual you want to do, right? Beyond the fit, beyond the money and everything, there is something who you are. Um, and I, I believe that, you know, this is who I am and this is what I really want to pursue in my life. Yeah. We are selfish, Vilas, and we are glad that you took that decision. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you are with us today. If, if not, you know, we would be like, okay, Vilas, some IT company, but we are glad we, you took that decision and we are getting to talk to you today. And uh, it's, I'd like to ask you, Vilas, like, you know, uh, I believe when you were doing India's Got Talent and you were still working then, right? Yeah. Uh, so how did you, uh, you know, there, was, there would have been so many challenges. And I also read that uh, you used to work, uh, you know, paint in the, during the night and, you yeah. know, work and all. How did you manage that? Um... I used to work from 11 o'clock till uh, 9 o'clock in the night, 11 a.m. to 9. So I would come back home and, you know, like from almost 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the night, I would start practicing painting till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and then again, you know, go back to office. So this happened for almost like two, three years I practiced this because I wanted to make the best use of uh, the time, whatever I had. And uh, that's when I... Uh, you know, took that first step to, in fact, perform in front of uh, a television, you know, audience. Wow. So there was a show here in Karnataka. Not many of you would know this. It uh, everyone talks about India's Got Talent, but much before that, in 2010 itself, I was part of another reality show. It's called Superstar of Karnataka. Okay. That was on a regional television show here in Karnataka it's on uh, Suvarna TV. So that gave me a lot of confidence to face the, you know, uh, camera because it's so important, right? Till then I was, yeah, I was doing painting, but then how do you perform in front of an audience? You know, like, uh, first of all, being an introvert kid, for me, it was a huge transformation to go on stage and to perform in front of people. Um, yeah, but then um, uh, during 2010 and 11, I remember I spent all, all my salary like almost everything that I earned uh, working for a company just to buy paints and canvases. Because you see the live artworks that I do, you know, it's like five feet uh, by four feet canvases, which requires, you know, a lot of investment and then a lot of pain to practice. So let's say the audition round in India's Got Talent, the painting that I did of Gabbar Singh. Mm -hmm. For that, while working for IBM, I had to practice at least 80 times approximately uh, in my home before I could go on stage and perform. You know, to get that uh, speed, that accuracy, to get that timing right and everything, I had to practice it over and over and over again for like few weeks. So yeah, it was, uh, it. but I, I, I believe that I did the right kind of investment at that point of yeah. time. That's certainly a lot of hard work and dedication, Vilas. Um, continuing to talk about your artwork, why speed painting? I mean, there's so, so many other things, but why did you choose to take speed painting? Okay, okay. So, um, I tried, uh, uh, you know, exhibiting my painting in some of the galleries. I met a few art, uh, like, you know, critics, those who promote art and everything during this uh, 2006, 7, 8 and all that. But mm -hmm. I didn't really get the kind of encouragement or support from many people, very honestly, right? So I was kind of disappointed and I was... Uh, spending a lot of time uh, with myself. I was doing a lot of introspection and I, uh, you know, in this uh, corporate world, we have SWOT analysis, right? You know? <laughs> yeah. So being a corporate guy really helped me as an artist because when I did that to, uh, to my own, uh, you know, strength and abilities to find all of that thing. So I was, so I came to a conclusion that, okay, I'm good in art, but then what is in art that I'm actually good at? So I came to a conclusion that, you know, from childhood, I'm actually good at doing it like really fast. 
Mm -hmm. So speed has to be my USP. Wow. So keeping that as my you know strength, I started working on uh, doing uh, speed painting. You know, uh, started improvising more. Uh, initially, I was painting on a very small canvas, but then as I gained some uh, experience and confidence, I started doing a lot of other uh, things. Um, but you know, yeah, why speed painting? A lot of people have this uh, notion that you know it is just a gimmick. A lot of people say that you know oh it's just a gimmick you know you come on stage and paint and all that it's junk, but no that's not the thing. Ultimately the uh, the idea you know the uh, the aim of any art form whether it is music you know acting or painting whatever it is it is ultimately to uh, move the audience. If you can make them happy, if you can make them sad, if somebody gets that message and, you know, if they are reacting to the artwork, you know, in a very emotional way, I think that's it. I have seen uh, while painting, I have seen people crying. I have seen people happy. I have seen people being inspired. So what more can I ask for? So I'm really happy being a speed painter. And I truly believe it is uh, my attempt to put an art form, which people otherwise thought that, you know, is being done sitting at a, uh, art studio, nobody is seeing an artist painting, he paints throughout the day and only the end product is being seen. That's how the art was, uh, uh, you know, perceived earlier. I wanted to, uh, you know, bring that process of creating an artwork in an entertainment, entertaining way on stage. Okay, absolutely. Silas, I agree with you that art brings out the, you know, emotions of a person. And my next question is, I wanted to know, you have done so many paintings of so many dignitaries. Yeah. Who, what was your first, uh, you know, painting that you found it very uh, challenging? You know, like you thought, oh, I may not be able to do this. Um, almost all. I mean, very honestly, I'm very, first of all, I'm very nervous every time I go on stage, you know, because uh, unlike, let's say, uh, many other art forms where they can repeat the same performances over and over again, I hardly get an opportunity to repeat the same performances because wherever I go, it's always a customized and a new artwork that I have to create. Uh, in terms of celebrities, um, the toughest probably was creating Aishwarya Rai's live artwork while she was present in the audience. I think that was really tough. Wow. I managed it somehow, yes. Great, Vilas. Uh, Vilas, like, uh, of course, you, you paint and all that. I was just curious, you know, have you ever thought of, uh, of painting, you know, blindfolded or with your mouth or food? Have you ever thought of doing that? Blindfolded, yes, I have thought about it. You know, a lot of people actually have this uh, misconception that the painting that I did on Asia's Got Talent, the Joker painting, is actually a blindfolded painting. It is not a blindfolded painting. I was just wearing a mask. But I do have this uh, uh, idea to actually be able to create something completely blindfolded. Okay. I have, in fact, tried doing that a few times. I have to work on this more and uh, I will do it. I will surely do it. I would need your appointment I mean, when you do that, Vilas. I'm yeah. certainly going to stalk you for that. No, but I will take your help as well. I mean, I'm <laughs> sure, you know, all of your input will see, uh, surely help me, you know, to be able to do that actually. Yeah. It will be great, Vilas. And now we are going to move to an excitement uh, round, Vilas. This is going to be a rapid fire round. I would just put some words there and uh, you, you, you should be as quick as possible when you're responding. You're ready? <laughs> okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, describe Vilas Nayak in five words. In five words? Yeah. Oh, okay. Passion, art, life, enjoy. Um, what else? I think that's it. The fifth word is... <laughs> <laughs> that sums up you, who you yeah. are. And my next question, your favorite painting that you have done so far? Um, the favorite painting, uh, I think, uh, of the Dalai Lama. When wow. we talk about the live painting, I really like that painting. The Dalai Lama. Wow. Yeah. And uh, your best memory as a speed painter? Best memory as a speed painter was actually, there are a lot actually, but one of that would be uh, to perform at halftime show. Uh, mm -hmm. Tim Duncan, this was NBA halftime show in USA. 
so when they introduced me as you know vilas nayak an indian artist all the way from india and all that so i was really proud you know it was like a being an indian and to perform for a global audience mm-hmm. wow wow and your funniest memory vilas while painting been quite a few actually quite a few funniest memories on stage i have actually fallen down from stage also while performing oh my god i <laughs> hope you didn't get hurt <laughs> yes yes uh, in performing you are totally engrossed in like what you are doing you are concentrating only on the art so sometimes the, probably the stage will be slightly less so there are a lot of challenges that comes on the spot right so yeah mm-hmm. have to manage all that very funny though <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, i have some uh, you know very one word um, uh, one words coming up for you so uh, you can just respond in just like you know immediate like life what is like to you to cherish passion to pursue speed painting that's my life vilas someone who enjoys his life to the fullest ujira um that's my home this is yeah <laughs> bangalore. bangalore 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 is where you know uh, it has given me a life it has given me a platform so i'm i'll always be thankful to this city great vilas you you did absolutely well in the rapid fire round i don't have a hamper but i can just clap for you and uh, let's uh, i'm just going to ask you a few more questions vilas uh, you know uh, about your association with um, india inclusion summit uh, could you please tell us how it all began and uh, we'd really like to, uh, to know you know you're such a wonderful person and being associated with you um during the india uh, at india inclusion summit it was a great thing i remember that uh, uh, during the last years at for inclusion you were one of the jury members and you had called i was like who oh, vila oh my god and i was i thought maybe it's a prank by one of my friends because i had told about it <laughs> to them but uh, could you please tell us about your association with in india inclusion summit yeah um i think it was uh, after uh, india's got talent i think after a year or two in probably 2012 or 13 that firuz um, got in touch with me we were talking on the phone and firuz was explaining about what india inclusion summit is and all that and i remember one of the first event that was part of for india inclusion summit uh, it actually happened at the sap office where i created uh, three artworks and uh, i think it was a sachin tendulkar uh, one painting that talked about every child is special and the other painting was about uh, was a portrait of dr apj abdul kalam so that was my first like the earliest uh, memory of being part of india's got talent uh, sorry the uh, india inclusion summit um, after that i have been part of almost every india inclusion summit that has happened i think except for one year where i was traveling was not able to be a part of it i think yeah i think six or seven times i have been part of india inclusion summit and I, and then it's like a family now i i, I wait for uh, india inclusion summit to happen every year and uh, i make sure that i am i'm there uh, when i heard about you know the uh, the uh, especially the tagline the uh, of india uh, in, inclusion summit which talked about everyone is good at something you know that that's exactly what i was believing in you know that's exactly how i uh, became a full time artist how i pursued my passion so i was like oh my god this is exactly what i believe in and i so uh, immediately we connected and i have been part of uh, it ever since then so always a pleasure as i said you know to be a part of this don't worry we last we are not going to leave you for i don't know the <laughs> next century i guess <laughs> uh, my next question will last um you were one of the jury members of the last yeah. year's uh, art for inclusion 2019 so how was your experience judging those artists i mean all of them um were uh, you know they had some kind of disability and uh, uh, there were so many entries and you had to select a few i'm sure the uh, you know the decision must have been tough could you please tell us about it yeah i mean i i, I actually couldn't believe that you know it was created by uh, you know all the artists who have some kind of uh, uh, disability but it was absolutely uh, first of all it was very tough to choose just few best work 
but the, whichever the work that we in fact uh, selected were absolutely amazing you know i am i i am actually really ho- uh, looking forward to talk to all the artists uh, after some time um and uh, i i actually uh, believe that you know uh, disability is, all, is also about you know not knowing what is your ability so in that way uh, you know the the uh, wonderful artworks that i have seen i don't think uh, they all know you know what their ability is and that's why they have been able to create such a beautiful work of art thank you so much vilas and uh, my last uh, uh, question before we end this particular segment because um, talking about the artists they are waiting for you on the other segment yeah. <laughs> so all of them are excited and even i am excited because all of them are absolutely amazing um what yes. is inclusion for you in when it comes to painting um it 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 is probably you know being able to uh, reach to a wider section of the audience you know we always have this limitations of uh, you know perceiving uh, art forms and we always you know uh, target it for a l- particular set of audience i think it has to uh, reach out to the wider section of the society and in that way i think india inclusion summit is doing an amazing job i remember feroz talking to me a couple of years ago uh, first when he talked about art uh, you know for inclusion and and i think that was amazing because uh, ultimately i think it's all about we through this all this initiative you know we are trying to create this awareness Uh, about disabilities and the need for inclusion in the wider i know the uh, mainstream society so in that way it's a fantastic uh, initiative i am i am looking forward in fact uh, to see what all these uh, artists will create next time <laughs> absolutely vilas i'm sure you will have a lot in store and uh, let's uh, just see what are art the artists of art for inclusion have and you know they have some questions for you they are all ready but before that i want to tell all you facebook viewers you can actually ask we last some questions so drop in your questions and you could be the lucky one whose question can be asked to vilas so let's move on to our artists of art for inclusion 2019 so let me start off with anu anu jain Can you please ask your question to Vilas, please? Uh, hello, sir. This Hi, is Anu. Um, sir, I just want to know uh, that because of this pan- pandemic, fo- focus of many organization and pan- philanthropies may shift towards more immediate needs like hunger, healthcare, and education. So, would this affect the promotion of art in long term? and would the art form change and would any new form of art would develop because of this would you think um i know that's a very relevant uh, question um well i don't know if the art forms will change because art forms have you know kind of uh, survived for centuries art forms have seen you know all kind of uh, the the depression the economic slowdown and everything so probably something that would remain constant would surely be you know all these art forms that's what i believe in but as an artist yes definitely you know the uh, effect is being seen everywhere because of uh, the pandemic because of the economic slowdown and all that i'm sure i was talking to one of one very young artist uh, from karnataka and he was saying sir i had to shut down my art school because the students are not coming and you know like people are not buying my artworks and all that stuff i would uh, i would say that you know what i have been doing is you know like actually using social media to the fullest uh, benefit you know that is probably one platform which we have free of cost where we can you know uh, post some of our really like our artworks and you know showcase it to the society and uh, that's one way we can actually you know keep be in the public eye and you know like as an artist i think that's very important but let's not lose hope because i i i also believe that this is just a temporary phase you know it probably will go on till what next year and slowly anyways the economy is opening up and all that and i am actually uh, not traveling for the last 6 months so but i'm doing a lot of uh, online you know like webinar shows for a lot of corporates and few ngos and all that and i also do fine art works at home i do a lot of uh, oil paintings so i'm also taking it in a very positive way that you know i am now getting all the time 
to spend with my family and also you know to do the kind of paintings that i always wanted to do yeah sure i'm sure sir i'm also a art teacher as well as fine art artist fantastic and i'm also living in bangalore oh, wow okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just uh, shifted to bangalore 5 years ago okay yeah Great. before i was in kharagpur west bengal so i believe what you have said is true we should not lose our hope and i am also keeping doing my artwork and doing taking online classes for adults as well as kids yeah yeah so that they can also mo- get motivated and do something because we are also staying at home since 6 months yes that go anywhere else yeah 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 we should one that. way of looking at it is that you know it is not only our uh, problem it's the problem that the entire world is facing you know exactly. that's one way of, you know uh, consoling ourselves but exactly. the other way of looking at it is you know looking at the positive side of it now you are getting all the time to let's say you are good at art it is also an opportunity for us to improve our craft you know there is always an opportunity to learn something new in your own yeah. field so let's okay. use this time to sharpen our skills and when the actually economy opens up you are out there again with as a much better artist yeah you're true yes. thank you so much sir thank, thank you, you thank for you. the for your question so thank let's you, move Ashwin. on to our next um, artist we have our wonderful shanti priya ah uh, hi vilas and thank you aishwarya i am an ophthalmologist hi i am an ophthalmologist a young concept parkinson's warrior and i'm a founder of sa foundation which is for uh, parkinson's patients and i'm a self taught artist oh wow so okay. my question to you would be when do you know a painting is finished because sometimes <laughs> i feel it's incomplete sometimes i feel i've overdone so when okay. how do you know you have finished your painting no actually i'll tell you honestly the first option that you gave is is actually not so true as compared to the sec- second option you know we as artists always 99% of the time we feel that the artwork is not done and we want to do something more and and i have i have actually spoken to many like really uh, uh, experienced artists what everyone says is that you know we should know when to stop like if you go to my social media and see one of the posts that i have like like very recently i created a lord ganesha painting it's it's actually not uh, completely finished but i was talking to my uh, family and they were saying that you know as an incomplete artwork itself it looks really good sometimes you try to do uh, over and over again you know try to uh, uh, give lot of finishing touches and all that you actually end up spoiling it yeah true some of the best some of the best works of art are done uh, very spontaneously the more yeah. we spend time on it i think the more we actually <laughs> spoil it yeah, yeah so the very important thing is to know when to stop okay thank Thanks you so much thank you for your question shanti um i request uh, priyanka to be ready in the next segment because uh, we can take a facebook question so for now um i'll ask uh, just for to ask away his question to vilas hi vilas hi jay uh i'm uh, i'm just for from kerala wonderful to know jay okay um मेरा एक क्वेश्चन था आप आपका बहुत वीडियो देखा है मैं इंटरनेट में यूट्यूब में और मैं भी कभी कभी फंक्शन में जाता हूँ और स्टेज में परफॉर्म करता हूँ लेकिन वो एक पूरा एक सेटिस्फेक्शन नहीं मिलता है मुझे इतना ऑडियंस ऑडियंस के सामने वो क्राउड में बहुत नॉइस होता है ना Um, no this is a problem not only you are facing i face it even right now 
as i said okay. you know i'm 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 actually nervous even when i go on stage whether it's a 10 people in the audience or like a 1 lakh people why because i'll tell you speed painting is such that you know you don't have a second chance on stage to correct your mistake or to take more time at the same time you have to entertain the audience you have to keep moving and all that so i think it's a ultimately you know i would say that you know please go ahead with one lot of you know you have to do lot of practice as i said you know let's say uh, india's got talent before i went there for the audition round i practiced for that one painting for like weeks see initially obviously it will take lot of time for you i i will tell you two things before you go on stage whatever the painting that you are going to create have that in your mind or do a sketch of that do that sketch at least 20 30 times on a piece of paper so that you can memorize it you know like it's like actually almost like going to an exam you memorize it you just go and do it there you don't have anything to see right that is one thing do it on a piece of paper as a sketch second you have to practice it on a similar size of canvas with the same music that you will actually be playing in the a uh, live event and do it over and over again let's say if the time limit is 6 minutes when you actually practice in your home in the same size of canvas first time you may, may not be able to do it in 6 minutes you may complete it in 10 minutes or whatever but then if you do it 10 times then you will be able to do it in you know at least 6 and a half 7 minutes then you know what is your possibility of doing it on stage so do a lot of practice at home i'm sure next time you go on stage you will be like super fun okay okay we love thank you thank thanks you. for the advice we last thank you jasper for the question okay. and now over to priyanka who will be reading out uh, a question from our facebook viewers hi vlas can you hear me hi priyanka uh, good morning and i will be uh, asking questions on behalf of the audience yeah. so we received a lot of responses all okay. your fans have wished you a very happy teachers day on uh, facebook and uh, your fan bharat and ashwin volunteers of india inclusion summit has said hello and namaskara so namaste bharat namaste ashwin <laughs> i am i am i am i am their fans too <laughs> <laughs> yes so moving on the first question asked by ketan is why vilasar does not meet his fans <laughs> sorry sorry what is that i i didn't hear sorry ketan, why vilasar like Why Vilas sir does not meet his fans? Why don't you meet your fans? <laughs> That's the <Yeah>. complaint. <laughs> because uh, because uh, right now there is COVID nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> nice work. Nice. No, but I I do meet Priyanka. I mean, see, I'll tell you, I have met people when I travel, especially right. There are a lot of people who message me on uh, social media saying that uh, we are in the same city and all that. Sometimes it's obviously not possible because you just go to that city finish the event and you uh, you know fly off to another event and all that but whenever i have time i make sure that i meet i have met a lot of people okay so um, uh, there is a next question from the same person ketan he asked why vilas sir uh, does not speak about the business aspect of art oh okay okay well i i probably you know if uh, you guys really want it i will talk about it in a separate video later on but then mm-hmm. i don't want to talk about business aspect because i don't want to look like a businessman but this is a very honest opinion that you know like all the artists should also think as a businessman you know like it's not enough if you say that okay i want to paint because i love art and all that no but you ha- also have to think as a brand you as a brand your artwork as a as a product that you can you know uh, you know market so uh, yeah. i think that's very important mm, uh, in that way corporate experience really helped me i'm really thankful for all that uh, experience i have sure thank you uh, one last question just a last question from yeah, yeah please please thank you aishwarya uh, one last question from the audience is uh, from kiran she asks uh, how many hours does vilas sir devotes for painting how many hours do you devote for painting it depends actually not uh, ev- not uh, not really every day that i paint but uh, there is not in a single day that i spend without thinking about my art concept or the world of art uh, but in terms of uh, painting uh, practices at least 3 uh, to 4 hours a day for sure thank you thank you ashwarya that's thank all i have uh, from the audience perspective 
Thank, thank you, you so great. much, Bianca. Thank you, Vilas. Thank you, Vilas, for your responses. Thank you. And uh, now we can take a question from our very dear Brian, all the way from Kerala. Good morning. I am Brian from Kochi. Happy to meet you, Vilas. Happy Teacher's Day. Good morning, uh, Brian. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for your wishes. So wonderful to talk to you. Uh, good morning, Vilas. I'm Brian's mother. Uh, so I'll just uh, ask a question on uh, both of our behalf, actually. Sure, sure, uh, sure. We are actually in awe of your painting. Since we were not uh, exposed to art, uh, you know, it is only through Brian that uh, this art world is open to us. So when we got your call during that, uh, you know, the selection time, yeah. uh, I I didn't actually know you know, much about you, sorry, at that time. Yeah. And I went and Googled and I realized that I was speaking to such a great artist. So, and we Googled and found, I watched a lot of uh, your, we, together we watched a lot of your uh, art work. And something that left us stunned was the art that you used to do uh, within a certain time frame. And you the artwork would be in the reverse. And then by the end of it, you would, you know, turn it upright. And mm -hmm. that is something that, left us totally stunned and we wonder how you do it is there a lot of preparations that go into it uh like hours of preparation before you do that <laughs> because yeah. that the first time you've seen something like this oh okay <laughs> the upside down painting right yes yes, yes. the way i uh, practice for uh, performance while i'm doing upside down painting is actually to study the picture upside down you know i don't I don't, let's say if I have to create Sachin Tendulkar painting, uh, this is a very funny incident, okay, I'll just tell you. So, uh, in India's Got Talent, uh, during the quarter finale round, I created Sachin Tendulkar painting upside down, okay, and uh, be and because after that, uh, this one, lot of uh, events, people kept asking me to do Sachin Tendulkar painting upside down. So, I was only looking at Sachin's uh, portrait, ulta, upside down, okay. So in one of the event, all of a sudden they asked me like, can you do Sachin Tilkar painting straight the way it is, not upside down? I said, oh my God, that would be really tough. <laughs> because I was only looking at his picture upside down. I think that that answers your question that, you know, yes. if we if we study a picture long enough upside yes. down, I, I keep uh, whatever painting I have to do upside down in my phone, in my laptop. Okay as an upside down painting itself. So I studied that way, I memorize it and I do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Vilas. It was it's so nice to be with you on a, sharing the same platform and so inspired mm -hmm. by the work that you do. Thank it's you so nice much. I'm, I'm looking forward to what uh, Brian. Uh, Thank, Brian. Thank, Brian. Thank, Brian. Thank, Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Vilas. 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 I'm sorry, that's, I'll just mute myself first. Yeah. Uh, so we move on to our beautiful Payal, who has our next question to you, Vilas. Um, hi, Vilas. Hi, Aishurya. Good morning. Hi, I'm Payal from Rajasthan. Uh, I do portraits. Hi. Uh, I do portraits in different mediums, and my work inspired by nature and Rajasthani culture and women. Wow. wow. Uh, my question is, I do uh, paintings in different mediums. Should I just stay at one medium or sh uh, should I just continue working in different mediums? What's the medium that you use right now, Pail? Uh, nowadays, I'm using this uh, acrylic on canvas. Acrylic and, on canvas. Yes, okay. and charcoal on paper and mehndi uh, portraits on my hand. And I can do with both hands. I oh. can apply mehndi with both hands. <laughs> no, actually, uh, see, it's it's up, totally up to you uh, whether you want to specialize in one aspect or you want to explore some other aspects of the painting. Um, I will tell you, I was actually doing mostly pencil sketches, watercolor and acrylic painting till very recently. It's only just a few years ago I started doing more of oil painting and canvas, okay? Yeah, and oil painting takes much time and, you know, all the mess. Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's, it's actually a lot of uh, mess you know, in terms of the materials that you require and all that. But beyond all that, you know, the problems that we have in terms of the materials, the effect that you can create 
in oil painting is unparalleled. Like you just can't compare it with any other medium. Like you have a lot of uh, control over the medium once you practice it. But but having said that, whatever the medium that you have chosen to, you know, if you specialize in that, of course, just nothing like it. You know, there are artists who do just pencil sketching, just nothing else. And they have done some phenomenal work in their uh, area of expertise. Uh, but yes, you can try out different mediums. It will give you a sense of what is the good and you know plus and the minuses of different mediums. Finally, you have to be in one medium. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that will really help you. Thanks, Pyle, for the question. Thank you and so. <laughs> it's so nice to have you here. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Pyle. Thank you, Pyle. Thank you so much. Next, we have Vyas Hussain, um, who will ask you his question. Okay, maybe by the time he's getting ready, we can have a question from Sridhar. Are they both here? Okay. Uh, so we last like by the time they join, uh, you know, uh, I have one question. Uh, I hope I can ask you one question. Uh, tell us like, uh, you know, I've, I've heard like when some of your videos, um, you when you paint, you have a real, uh, uh, you know, a music like, you know, in the background, some music is almost like I'm driving a Ferrari car. Do you have any specifications? Do you tell them, hey, put this music on or something like that? I always um, prepare my own uh, music depending on the art concept that I have. So I think in India Inclusion Summit, you probably would have seen me creating a couple of artworks and the music always goes along with the artwork because I want to create an experience, overall experience for the audience. Let's say if I'm creating a Michael Jackson painting, a portrait of Michael Jackson, and if I play something, let's say Indian classical music, would that look good? Not really, no. right? So it always has to sink, you know, and let's say if I'm creating something about uh, a patriotic, uh, I would rather play a patriotic music in the background. So it always, the music has to go along with the theme of the artwork. That enhances the overall experience of the audience is what I believe. Yeah. Amazing, Vilas. Uh, is uh, anyone of you ready, Niaz or uh, Sridhar? Or uh, we can take a what, question from the audience. Hey, uh, Aishwarya Priyanka here, Mansari. Yeah. So we have uh, one question from Vijay for Vilas. Vijay says that he has been uh, painting, but for past six years, he was occupied with some other things. So now if he wants to start again, how does he start again? <laughs> uh, they, they actually say, you know, it's a very famous saying that learning is like rowing upstream. If you stop, you go backwards. You don't stay at the same place. You actually go backwards if you stop. So you have to start from the basics. There is no other way. You know, like if you stop, if you have stopped for like so many months or like years, you have to start from basics. That is pencil sketching. Um, if you want to, if you are uh, good at uh, pens, uh, you know, let's say doing, uh, I do a lot of uh, sketches from life. You know, there's a lot that I feel that we have to learn from nature. Um, so. Uh, I do a lot of observation as an artist. I think it's very important that we sharpen our observation skill also, whether it is observation or thinking, you know, depending on your capabilities, but that's what uh, he has to do. And uh, good luck for uh, starting, uh, you know, uh, sketching and painting once again, just um, don't give too much of gap. That's all I would say, you know, like if I don't practice for, okay, so I'll tell you, I went on stage four days ago, in Karnataka, there was an event. So I was doing a live event in front of the audience after a gap of six months because of this COVID situation. Now I could feel the limitations I have or the challenges I'm having or how nervous I was to actually paint live after six months of gap. So, you know, no matter how good you are, you give too much of gap, you are going backwards. So you have to start all over again. Thanks, Vilas. Thank you so much for the question. 
uh, I think uh, we uh, we can uh, that would okay. conclude the questions uh, from the artists. And uh, we would really like to thank you, Pilar, for being here with us, for sharing um, your experiences, your journey with art and uh, India Inclusion. It was amazing talking with you. And uh, we like to learn more from you. And what a good day. You know, it is Teacher's Day. And uh, uh, all of us here, you know, the artists and all those viewers who are watching us right now learned a lot from you. Thank you for sharing, uh, you know, your ideas and your journey with us it was absolutely amazing and um, yeah thank you so much Vilas for being there for us thank you so much Aishwarya thank you so much Priyanka and to all the participants uh, for first of all for India Inclusion Summit for inviting me to this uh, interaction session with all of you um, looking forward to interact with all the artists and uh, meet you all during the next India Inclusion Summit event. Thank you so much. Absolutely, Vilas. So we, after this, we are going to, all the artists are going to talk to you. So we are looking forward to that. Sure. And also, um, you know, I want to thank all our viewers who have tuned in, you know, Saturday morning and you all have tuned in. Obviously, you know, they are your fans, Vilas. They have tuned in for you. And uh, thank you all so much for watching us. And uh, uh, keep watching, um, you know, you keep sharing this link and uh, have a wonderful Saturday and thank you all. Bye.